Hello everybody. Our next camera is the EXA. It's the first type, but the fourth variant. Um, there's a few clues to that. The logo is engraved. It has these chrome uh, PC sync sockets. They're not the old type uh, sockets. And it has a removable pin on the hinge back so you can take the camera back completely off. It was made by Ihagi. I have no idea how to say that. It's one of those words I've only read, I've never heard. In Dresden, in what was then East Germany, the bottom even says uh, USSR occupied. This was the somewhat lower spec, cheaper little sibling of the Exacta. The lenses are interchangeable. It's the exact amount. Some exceptions are for lenses over 100 millimeters. They cut off portions of the image on the long side. I don't have an exact depth, but that's what I've read in several places. I read somewhere, which of course I could not find again before uh, putting together notes for this video, but some wide angle lenses protruded too far into the body, so you couldn't use those either. I have not verified that. The viewfinder is interchangeable with the Exacta. Um, it just slots into the body like that. There was this one, and then there was also a pent prism, like a modern SLR. So this one has um, this waist level finder, and it has a nice magnifier that, that flips up. Uh, for doing precise focusing work. And then with that flipped up, there's also the squares for kind of a sport finder for doing quick and dirty uh, framing of the picture. The lenses for this, there are some made by Zeiss, by Meyer Optic, by Schneider Kreuznach. And then this one, it's kind of the lower end. This is the E. Ludwig Meritar. Um, it's 50, mil, 50 millimeter f2.9. It's a cooked triplet, three elements in three groups. Uh, for being low end though, this is a pretty nice little lens. The shutter is really weird in this camera. The mirror is the first curtain of the shutter. Uh, when you cock it, the mirror comes down, you know, to the normal 45 degree angle so you can see it through the viewfinder and it pushes the bottom curtain down. When you fire it, the mirror comes up followed by the lower curtain. Um, so the mirror, when it's cocked, or the lower curtain um, after firing are what keep the film compartment light tight. Um, it's an interesting scheme, but because of the mass of the mirror followed by the lower curtain, limits the top speed to 150th of a second. Set that with this lever here on the top deck. And it's got the old school uh, shutter speeds, one, one 150th, one 100th, a 50th, a 25th, and then bulb. It is a pretty reliable scheme though. This thing works and seems to be pretty accurate after 60 years. The shutter button is here on the front rather than on the top deck. When I first got it before I looked at the manual I thought it was this, I thought it was broken. That's the rewind release. Um, it has standard cable release threads and it's got this kind of nifty cover that pops down so that you don't accidentally um, hit the shutter if you got it in a bag or something like that. There's a manually set film counter right here. You gotta use your the end of your finger on this little tiny knurled knob. It counts up and then that's again the rewind release. Um, the spools for winding, winding's not that bad. You just crank it, um, there it's cocked it, and there it moved the mirror down. And you can hear it. Kind of a nice solid thunk. Uh, the back releases with this le little lever rather than the rewind lever. It's not even a lever. The rewind knob. That does take a little while if you're shooting a 36 exposure roll. 
you're cranking on that sucker for a little while. But, yeah. It's pretty clean inside. Um, it's got this cut out here because the uh, rewind knob does not come up. But it's really easy to put your, uh, your film cartridge over here. And a really cool thing, it has this removable take-up spool which has this kind of spring clip. It's super easy to use. You just clip the edge of your film leader under it. Make sure you're lined up with these uh, sprockets right here. And because this is removable, you can also use an empty film cassette and wind it into a film cassette so you're ready to go. Like if you, you know, load your own cartridges, just don't secure it to the spindle in the feed cartridge. When you're done, you're done. It's ready to be processed. Um, I took this on a hike up to the Trompas Lakes and one of the Truchas Peaks. Um, you know, a little heavy, clunky. It was uh, 100 speed black and white film. But this thing performed admirably. I did not have a lens cap but an aspirin bottle cap thankfully fits perfectly as it's just a slip-on lens cover. So I'm going to keep that with it to protect it because the lens is in really good shape. So probably not right away, but I will definitely shoot with this camera again. I really like it. So I'll see you then. Whoops. I'll see you then.